Dana, we got Sean Hayes today, who is, uh, you know him from a lot of things. He's also one-fifth of the three guys on Smartless. And uh, I should have given him that joke when he was here. Sean Hayes is the, I think he's right up there with the guy you'd want to uh, uh, sit next to at an award show or something. Or he will go into a restaurant and he's there. Like he is like yeah. effusively fun, up and positive and funny. Yeah, it's true. I've seen him at Koi, and uh, that's where I saw him, and we talked about it on Smartless. But I've seen him, and he's always fun. I'll go to his table. He'll come to my table. We just do bits. And he's always a laugh, upbeat, uh, great on Smartless. I was kidding. You know, he's one, like when we were doing Just Shoot Me. Oh, a few people remember? Thank you. And he was doing Will and Grace. He, I think he was there when we were all up for a, he was always like smoking me in like the Emmys, like we'd all be up for supporting. But I think one time he and I got up for a Golden Globe and it was, I should have asked him this, because it was back when that supporting actor was just actor on TV, which is way harder. So you're up against everything. So I think it was me and him and then two people from ER, which is a drama, and then Gregory Peck <laughs> wow, from Moby Dick, a movie on TV. And so I'm like, just give it to why, why are we even having a contest? This guy's like a legend. And then he got up to give his speech because he smoked all of us. And then he said, I can't believe I'm getting a an award for a 90 second cameo. I was like, that's all you did? <laughs> I'm in the salt mines for 22 episodes a week, mumbling my jokes. I can't believe Unreal. that I'm getting an award for 90 seconds of, <laughs> of work. I'm Gregory Peck. <laughs> Sorry, best I could do in a pinch. Yeah, that's how he was. <laughs> and he killed it. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm, that's exactly. He goes, Moby Dick, I'm going to throw a spear at you. Well, when I was when I was on the Sharon Night Live, the category for getting an Emmy was variety. So you'd be up against jugglers, you know. <laughs> People Harvey swallowing Corman. fish and just a pogo stick star. I mean, <laughs> someone from AGT. Uh, other award shows, the uh, you know the inaugural address of the president. I mean, it was the most eclectic. <laughs> but after <laughs> unicyclists, I find yeah. So, but back to our guest, Sean Hayes. Uh, I would listen to this one if you want to be in a good mood and hear a lot about Sean Hayes yeah. and all all the stuff he's done. You know, from Will and Grace forward, he just keeps working and. And Smartless, we are a little, they are like the Borg, if you know the reference. It's, you, the Smartless guys are doing very well on their podcast. Let's put it that way. And Sean's a big part of that. He's done Broadway. We talk about that. Yep. We talk about everything. And without further ado, mm -hmm. oh, bless you. Uh, here's Sean Hayes. Let's just get through this one. Let's get through it. We are finally talking to a pro. We're talking to a pro. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. No, no, no. This is wonderful to see you both. Uh, David, uh, good morning. Mm -hmm. Looks like you just woke up. Uh, he's stretching. <laughs> the the he's beauty been, of Dana. Zoom. He's been up for six no hours. Knows. No one knows watching. <laughs> yes. Um, Dana, are you at home? Is everybody at home? I'm at home, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Which is where are you? Where I'm are in an you? Old folks home. Where are you, Sean? I'm, my room's next to David's in the old folks home. <laughs> <laughs> we, have I, I didn't... No, we have a knock system. One one knock means come over. Two means no, come over to me. Three knocks means what are you having for dinner? That whole thing on the wall through the wall. I did that with my sister when I was a kid. Oh, that was your system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my system. My sister used to pay me her allowance to make her laugh. Really? Yeah, I had a younger sister. And I would get a tennis racket, pretend I was playing it. I don't know. It was, <laughs> what What did you do with your- My stepdad well, how... used to knock three times. That meant, I'm going to do something and you're not going to tell anyone. Oh, geez. Anyway, so what else is going on, guys? <laughs> so what else is going on? Sean, how's your life? How's your, let's not go down that rabbit hole. hysterical. <laughs> My life is good. My, everything's really, really good. I mean, I love it's, your podcast. It's too good. It's too good, Sean. It's, That's it's what we're good. here about. It's just as good as yours. I mean, it's Do you just listen that. to... I I refer to your podcast a lot. This I've yeah. called you the smartless guys. And yeah. you're kind of like the Borg if you watch Star Trek Next Generation. You're like... The you're like the, the the seniors at Chimney Corner, and David and I are with you know lunch pails in the in the bleachers. 
<laughs> it's like yeah. you can never no, no. beat the smartless guys. No, my my husband is obsessed with Star Trek. I don't really know Star Trek, but I know Borgs. But I was with you guys for the lunch pails. I'm oh, with you, you guys. Were there? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm like, no. you know, I'm sci-fi nerd geek, but I but just not Star Trek. I just never got into it. Well, what what's your because uh, I'm, I'm a little bit in that area. What's what's your uh, what's your area? I love Star Wars. I love like Ex Machina. Uh, like, yeah, like single stand Ex Machina. Arrival. Did, did arrival? You see arrival. Oh, yeah. I s- did you see it, David? I saw Ex Machina. And that's what I was saying. It was, that was a hot saw- robot. But but. Arrival, yeah, yeah. I liked it so much. I brought my wife back the next day, who's not yeah. a real science fiction fan, was yeah. mesmerized by it. So, yes, yeah. and, and how, it's like a very sixth sense. Like, if you don't know mm-hmm. that all of her flashbacks are really flash forwards, like I yeah. had to watch it again because I thought it was so clever. Is that Amy yeah. Adams? Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner, thank you. Great, God. great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a great one. I love all that stuff. I, you do? Mm hmm. I'm into UFOs. I on my on my algo. It's all about UFOs and yeah. And did you like how they rebranded it to UAPs, right? Mm-hmm. And I did. why does that help? But because I'm well, we're, are we going to get into it? We're gonna no, get well, into it? let's do bit. it. I love it. UFO to UAP. That's right. Okay. So because because UFO, it's almost like we need to when politicians rebrand things or like people mm-hmm. in this country brand things. It's because they're on to you or something. So UFOs, everybody identified flying objects. How is that different than unidentified aerial, aerial phenomena? Phenomenon. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. Why did yeah. we rebrand it? Which Listen, makes me. Which makes J-Lo me- is Jennifer Lopez. She switched it, but I know what was going on. Yeah. She was the same person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can identify her like hmm. that. It's very similar situation. We asked. <laughs> <laughs> David told William Shatner, one of our guests, that yeah. he believed in UFOs. William Shatner, he was 92 at the time. Yeah. He, he did a 10-minute thing about mirages in the desert. Very clever, very articulate. Yeah. And I'll never forget that. So when you say, you hear, you what hear is, about... What, is, what is mirages in the desert? That they exist or don't exist? Like Well, just that, yeah. of course, you're going to see things you can't explain. You know, I think it was not pro little martians i I, can't believe there's not water you know (laughs) do you like star trek (laughs) no like i like the star trek movies by the way i like the movies that jj did yeah Uh, but i just did i don't know the history so i couldn't i don't know like the relationship anyway i digress but anyway ufos yes i I want to know what you believe in do you believe there's aliens are here i totally believe (laughs) no i don't know that they're here but I believe all the stuff that we've seen, like the footage and stuff that the military has, they have to have come here. It just doesn't. Did you see Prometheus? Of course. Yeah. Did you, David? What's I can you you use it in a sentence? David leave Prometheus. <laughs> oh, I thought there was a spelling bee. Uh, no, I, I uh, did. I is that with X Machina's boyfriend, Fastbender? <laughs> yes. Oh X, yeah. Are they really dating in real life? Oh yeah. Oh, oh no, know. he's married to somebody else. Yeah, Alicia Vicklander. Am I crazy? Yeah, Vicklander. Good one, David. Wow. <laughs> that's See, terrific. I look dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the idea that aliens have visited yeah. and, and maybe oh, right. seated at us a la 2001. Well, were you, are, uh, Dana, are you a big fan of Prometheus? Because I have a little scoop. Well, I am a big fan, and I don't think they're going to make another one unless you've got a scoop. No, I think they're, well, no. But I have a scoop about... I, I don't know if it's true, but I, I, I heard that the the reason why people had they cut out a big section of that movie is what I heard. I don't know if it's true. Okay. Where they explain why the engineer, the big alien at the end. Came. Yeah. So uh, they explained it through the Bible that Jesus was gone. You know, the Bible, they don't talk about Jesus for like 30 years or whatever it is. Yeah. It's during that time that that engineer plucked him from Earth, took him back to their planet, teach him how to uh, teach to how humanity should go mm-hmm. and that plucked him back down. That's why in the Bible he pre-appears it when his thirties and then they get it wrong because people are still treating each other like shit. So the engineers come back and want to swipe it the whole earth away and start over again. So what? it's like a little Bible thing that they cut out there. Right. Right. Yeah. The, and that, and it was, it was really Scott's explanation for why Jesus was missing in the Bible for so many years, which I think is really a great idea. I didn't get any of that. I did see it. I was going to say, is it Ridley Scott? I watched the passion of the Christ, uh, two nights ago and can't beat it. 
That was a pun. <laughs> no, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh it's Is that a joke from the movie. <laughs> yeah. That was a uh, tagline. I, I don't say know. that. It was on the posters. <laughs> anyway, Catholicism is very, very interesting. Uh, so yeah, well, I grew up Catholic. Did you guys grow up Catholic? I'm a lapsed Lutheran, but now I go to Catholic church with my wife. <laughs> lapsed Lutheran. Lapsed. Well, Lutheran. I go like that because I see the friars there, and I go L. I go like that. They go, you could get a. I don't do the wafer. He says you could go up and cross your arms and get a blessing. I never, even as a kid, I could say something, but we'd have to cut it. We'll, we'll cut we'll it. We'll say we'll cut it. <laughs> that's, no, I can't. I can't take the risk. Um, what? But, oh, no. No, I was a horny gay kid. And I was. Right. And you can say that. Home. Yeah, I can say that. Okay. Yes. I, and I, I know where you're going. At 13 or 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So I was. And then that's when all the news came out about the horrible molestation in the Catholic Church. But for me, I would have killed to date anybody at the time. <laughs> so I, that's all I'll say about that. I thought you were saying, why is Jesus always like in a loincloth with a 12 pack? I mean, right, right. Uh, no, you were going to say, why aren't these priests eyeballing me? Were you changing your outfits? I didn't say it. Okay. I'm just saying that's, we got, I, we that's a normal scenario if you're a kid. You don't know. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. No, no. You're just a kid. It's yeah. all. Most stations horrible. I wasn't saying like, anyway. You're like, uh, I'm just a kid. I'm just I'm, a kid that's not sexy. I'm going on record of right. hating all child abuse. I'm just, yes, you guys. Can, oh, you. yeah. I'm, I'm anti-child abuse. I have to say yeah, it. I am anti-child <laughs> abuse as well. Yeah. That's something uh, you have to yeah. proclaim. And uh, I'm anti-podcast that wander into child abuse yeah, and make jokes. Same, same. No, I hate it all. Okay. We're all in uh, sync. But I grew up Catholic, and so we, we were forced to go to church and and CCD classes, like we're you yep. know, Bible classes as kids. Yeah. But um, yeah, I never, I never really got into. I would, I would always. There was two chapels, and me and my oldest brother would always be like, "Bye, mom. We're we're going to go to the other chapel." We were just playing in the backyard of the church. We oh, you didn't church. go to the chapel. Well. It, there were five of us, and if our parents slept past 9 a.m., we knew we didn't have to go. So we yeah. would be like, oh, we may not have to go, because we have to put our church pants on, Right. which my brother Scott, we shared a bedroom. We had to put church pants on, and we didn't want to be seen in the neighborhood with our church pants. So we would be completely flat in the back I mean, of the station I, wagon, I, hiding. I think the outfit for everybody that works at Home Depot is church pants. <laughs> I think that's what church you, pants. you have to buy to work there, and also Best yeah. Buy. Yeah, Best Buy, yeah. Those brown. Guys. I know. Yeah. That's that Dennis Miller line that I think was a little class warfare. You know, Christ sakes, if you're 40 years of age and you still wear a name tag at your employment area, you may be thinking of another career. Another right? vocation. You know, another vocation, you know. I mean, Dennis is. <laughs> anytime you do that, David is just like, I've seen it all. I, I like it. I jump yeah. in. I piggyback. I could listen to you do 8,000 impressions every single day in my life till the day. I do Dennis <laughs> now with more of a clenched jaw because he's, he's incredibly successful. He's very relaxed. He's very good with money. Yeah. And, he, and he's kind of like this, very soft. Okay. You know, might go uh, <laughs> shoot nine holes with Mikey Douglas, that, you know. And, uh, <laughs> that sounds yeah. very much like him. Got a couple shekels in my pocket, you know. You got to him at all? Oh, yeah. 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 I tell anyone I like who was, you, you're you're kind of in the army, uh, not literally, folks. But when you go through the gauntlet of SNL with a with a cadre of people, yeah, you're forever kind of bonded just because it's the most intense experience you can have in show business. Apparently, right. You did two thousand one. You hosted. Oh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah, you hosted Saturday Night Live. That's the theme of our show. <laughs> No, did yeah, you host we'll Prometheus? Talking. What do you think we're talking about? <laughs> no, he hosted no, 2001. Was, that was, was released in 1968. That's what I thought. I was like, wait, Space Odyssey? Oh, yeah. you're right. Uh, no, yeah, 2001, it was like the, uh, who was, uh, Sh I think Shaggy was the musical guest, and it was. Uh, Shaggy. Yeah. Shaggy. <laughs> I can't believe Sean Hayes is on Saturday Night Live. Here he comes out for his monologue. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, that's right, he did that. Gotta love kids. Did Scooby Kaysen. ever talk, or did he just go? No, in rut row. That was That's it. It's not that much. It is. It's a word. It's a more. It's more than your dog can say. Oh fuck! You got me there. 
Hey, guess what? Lauren asked me once, what, what is, what's the deal with Scooby-Doo? Why, why, why do the kids like it? And I say it's the first time they're watching kind of something that scares them. That, uh, that's still very playful. It's yeah. kind of a hor it's a horror show to a two year old. But as a kid, did you watch it as a kid? Yeah, I did. I think I it was. I don't know when it first hit. I think maybe I watched. When did it first come on? Do I don't you know? know. I don't know. But I couldn't get into it. I what? We just had this conversation the other day. What cartoons did you watch? I watched Tom and Jerry because there were no words, so I didn't have to concentrate, and that's it. No. I go back to Felix the Cat. You can look it up. But that was the oh, first I, cartoon. I watched. I that. used Popeye. Uh, was around mm. in the 60s. Little, um, mm. Johnny Quest was sort of considered cool. Uh, not too uh, El Cabong. There were some very silly Hanna-Barbera. El Cabong, what's in it? Some donkey with a guitar would beat people up. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Look it up. El Cabong. Um, That's milk? Well, let me ask you. Uh, TV shows as a kid. Yeah. Because you're a little down the ladder for me. So it'd be like the Fame ladder. 70s, uh, late 70s. Uh, no, uh, yeah, I got oh, I, Same ladder, just further. You're, you'll climb uh, up to my uh, point at some point. I bet you uh, watch Brady Bunch. Yeah, I watch Brady Bunch. I watch, I remember, well, I remember watching a lot of sitcoms like Three's Company, Three's Company and then Cheers when it first started. But my mom used to make me uh, yep. record uh, the Cosby show for her every Thursday night because she would go bowling. And so, you know, I, I, I was raised by my mom raised five kids by herself. We had not dad left when I was super, super young. Five Sounds years. like your mom left, too. God, I wish my I wish my dad had left. I'm sorry for your loss, Sean, but that would have been <laughs> terrific with five in our family, too. But dad, daddy stayed. <laughs> Couldn't get daddy there's, out the door. <laughs> there's worse things than daddy leaving. Yeah, yeah. And that's daddy staying. staying right. <laughs> that's probably true. That's Love another it. podcast. Can <laughs> I ask you a question? Yeah. How many viewers did Cosby, the Cosby show have at its peak? I have no idea. What is this, a trivia show all of a sudden? <laughs> Just answer. Find the wall trivia? 50 um, million. Is, I don't know. Yeah, I got it. it had to be a ton. Not, I'm still laughing at David said it sounded like mom left too. Yeah, yeah she went bowling <laughs> yeah. while you guys fucking fought for mom tater didn't tots. leave. She just yeah. mom mom just made me her surrogate husband. Yeah, yeah. Which she told me that when she was fifty. I went to therapy. You were my surrogate husband. Wait, tell me you know? that's so interesting. My mom, when she passed away from Alzheimer's like three four years ago, she I she, I kind of took on that role too because she would I think she would think of me as her husband or something. It was really interesting and 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 then funny because alzheimer's you know you go through all the crying and the crying and the crying for years and years and then to get out of it you can only make funny like it can only be funny in order of to course. yeah anything can and be so, funny even though it's horrifying I mean, that, yeah, that is yeah. a horrifying situation was your mom was your mom kind of happy there are certain people with alzheimer's get very angry and yeah. mean and nasty and some are kind of silly and happy yeah she was at least she was paranoid and angry and um, mm -hmm. and then once you got on the other side of that, then she was pretty pleasant. My mom was funny because she would point to a, a little plant next to her table and she'd say, have you met my friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom, one time I walked into her bedroom and she left a crap in the toilet. And I go, I go, mom, you got to you got to flush the toilet. And she goes, she point she pointed out. She goes, that's not mine. I don't know whose that is. They come in here. They do that and they leave it. Ah, that's leave her it. Alzheimer's <laughs> yeah. talking. Uh, yes, and of course, and then I start laughing, and then she starts laughing. It was, mm. and you don't know if she's clowning you or not. Well, I, no, she wasn't. She was full on. Hey guys, newsflash came funny. out yesterday. They had an AI study, seven million blah blah blah. They found out that men, it happens to be Viagra, that take Viagra on any kind of regular basis, have yes. a seventy percent less chance of getting Alzheimer's. Oh, like it's a preventable drug? Because it's all about blood vessels and getting rid of plaques in the brain. And yeah, yeah it's, it's just, I don't know. David's looking up his either his bank account. No, or I'm, he... I'm listening intently. Yes. <laughs> David's what interested. What about Viagra? <laughs> um, that's interesting. I don't need it. Do you guys need it? Uh, only if I no. go to court. <laughs> what are you talking about? Only, we don't only need at it. dinner. Go. Sean, well, that's so silly. <laughs> I know. What a funny question. Yeah. <laughs> I get them at the gas station when they go, they're right by there and they're like, Hey, grab a boner for the road. And I'm like, why are they right here? Someone's just like, Oh, I might need that. I'll get that one. Some Twizzlers. And it's like, 
It's not. It's not real. Who has an original Viagra erectile dysfunction joke? Anybody? David must have one. I don't think so. <laughs> there's no. There's, I, I, there's a billion of them. <laughs> no, but I. I have to take other stuff. I don't take that. I have to take a thyroid thing. And the, it's the first thing I do every single morning. Sexy. Go ahead. Thing. <laughs> what happened to your thyroid? Low, I don't know. Yeah, low, 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 low weather. So that. So you're tired. Then you get the pill, and you. Go, well, I was oh. like, why am I exhausted? And then. Uh, went to the doctor. He's like, "Oh, it's just normal. You just okay. age number two. And then I take um, a bunch of supplements and a little baby aspirin because I get AFib. I love talking about medical stuff. So if you guys want to talk about medical stuff, Dana loves it all day long. I me me too. I we like fun. science fiction and medical stuff. Yeah, I David, think you you a, might be my new best friend. Yeah, David, take a five. <laughs> no, I'm. I, I look forty. I'm actually forty six. Oh, who's oh self de- self declared? You look 40. yeah. You're forty. You're forty six, but you read at a forty eight year old level. I identify <laughs> I <heard>. as <laughs> a lower number than what the I am. The guy's got a noggin on him. Um, medicine, yeah, I'm good with <laughs> cardiovascular disease. Yeah, yeah. Anything with bypasses or stents or yeah, yeah, yeah. or. Did you read my, about this new thing that that you could put into your heart? Oh man, I forgot what it's called. Love. It's brand new. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't know about that. You have to have a doctor do it. No, actually, I actually had to take it out. <laughs> you did. Now you oh, want it back. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and they're all out of it. I, they're, they're like backlog. Like I, I signed up. For them. Anyway, there's this new thing you can put inside your heart that makes it. Um, like it's a blood, it stop. It makes it so you don't ever have to have uh, blood thinners. Oh, hmm. yeah. I don't know about that. I was on them for first. I was on niacin for ten years, yeah. three thousand milligrams a day, yeah. and then and then my why because bad bad heart or why? Uh, just to help with the the uh, bring your HDL the good cholesterol yeah, up. Yeah, but after yeah. ten years, my cardiologist, who's a friend of mine, I'll do the accent for him. He's Hindu. He goes. You don't really have to take it anymore. It doesn't do any good. <laughs> so it was oh, like really? 3,000 3, a day for a decade. Then I was on Plavix, a blood thinner for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And then he said, you don't really <laughs> didn't need it that long. <laughs> Get rid of it. Does <laughs> so, niacin make you orange? I've heard that. Is that a lie? My wife took one of my niacins, which is a B something thing. Uh-huh. Out of the blue, she took a thousand. Uh-huh. Explosive diarrhea, drenched in sweat. I mean, I acclimated slowly. Yeah. But that stuff is nasty. Yeah, I'd kill for some diarrhea just to lose yeah. some weight. Here yeah. and there. <laughs> what about Ozempic? Oprah had a special on I it. Know, I know. Just... I just saw that she had a special. I watched it for like two seconds. I was like, oh, I got it. Is it Ozempic just diarrhea? Well, we have to, another disclaimer. We are pro, uh, we are anti body shaming. We are? Yes. Yes. And pro modern science Correct. that can re- reorientate it's the brain. brain and take a, go, yeah. yeah. What an edgy yes. show. Yeah. We are. <laughs> I have questions. You can, we could do a quiz like no. which one do you want to tackle? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Please. Okay. Well, I guess the first one because. I assume you're a fanatic. So I did listen to you, you guys. I don't know. What is it? Bill Flarnett and, and G- Gister Bop Fluke. Yeah, <laughs> no, Justin, no. Justin. I, I listened to you guys with McCartney. Oh, I wow. think that was a long time you, ago. You did him before us, but I listened to you talk to McCartney before David and I. Yeah, yeah. So then I didn't know at the time, like you're like a really great, classical pianist oh i play yeah i studied yeah as a classical pianist i started when i was five years old there was a piano teacher across the street and i came home from you know preschool and my mom said do you want to take piano lessons i was like i literally said quote i'm not doing anything else so i walked across the street Mm. started taking lessons and stuck with it and then i did yard work because we couldn't afford anything we couldn't afford heat one winter we couldn't afford food a lot of the time so to pay for my piano lessons, I would do yard work from my, at my piano teacher's house for her and her husband. And her husband was a conductor in the Chicagoland area. Ooh. And so I was doing all these landscaping and yard. I was, I was horrible. And people in high school thought I lived there. It was this big mansion like in where I lived. And I was like, yeah, I lived there. Like the movie Lucas, anybody? And yeah. so I- <laughs> Lucas. Yeah, I remember that shot in my high school. And so, um, and so I- That, that yeah, side that, story is already more interesting, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, I Lucas, was Lucas. Lucas I went Lucas, out for football, Lucas. so I love Lucas. 
Wasn't that such a good movie? Oh, good fuck. Movie. I love it. Winona Ryder's oh, yeah. first film. Oh, that's right. Charlie yeah. Sheen was great Sheen in it. Very yeah. green. Chuck, Chuck Sheen. Yeah, Go Chuck ahead. Sheen. So you played the piano and mowed some lawns. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> And you wrote a song about mowing lawns, right? There was like a local Turns out, pop. I hit. was better at mowing lawns. I went into garden. So I understand that you uh, you learned to tinkle the ivories. And um, oh, Dana has a good question about, about McCartney, though, lawn, right? Well, I was just I was just noticing the, how. Yeah, the, 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 so you're interviewing Paul McCartney, and I didn't know you were a classical pianist. So you uh, you did ask me, or you you were dissecting one of his songs, and you uh, got very into the language of signatures and the or quarter fifth. Oh note, yeah, yeah, all that. About, um, What's yes. the song? What's the song? Uh, what's that song that from the ni- in the nineteen nineties? Um, Long and Winding Road. No, no. Uh, oh, the nineties. Flowers in the dirt. Say, say, um, say. No, no, that was eighties. Cut out this air. Let me just think of it. Uh, it was. Um, My brave face. No more lonely nights. No, that was eighties. No more. That was eighties, but yeah. Nights. Yeah. Great. So anyway. So it's a great song. So I asked him about. Could you sing a little more of that? <laughs> That's good. Okay. I'm always there. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, he yeah. I was I was talking to him because I'm a, a yeah a music nerd. Like I'm sure he is, but I didn't know that he never studied music or anything. But so I I, I don't know if I made him aware. I, I, he was into like he wrote like a three four bar, then a five 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 four bar, and then a four four mm-hmm. bar, and then a three four bar again. So it wasn't you. It wasn't in the four that we know. Like pick any most. You know, ninety nine percent of pop songs are in four four time, yeah. which is kind yeah. of time, which is just four beats. Dun, 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 Five, six, dun, seven, eight. Dun, dun, you know, dun, 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 and um, yeah. but he would write and all the the Beatles stuff and his stuff. He would write different time signatures all the time. But if yeah. you're not used to music theory, you probably don't. You know, pick it up. Uh, it like I did. Yeah, but that's mm. interesting. I pray he probably likes to hear that kind of stuff more than. And that, well, I went into this long explanation, as you know, to Paul McCartney. And at the and then, long explanation, he says, oh, I didn't know that I don't read music. I was like, okay, next yeah. question. Yeah. He goes, okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I always find fascinating that people who don't study it are, are prolific in it. I don't know if George Martin kind of, you know, by osmosis sort of influenced them. But if you look at Penny Lane and then it goes to yeah. all the different timing. Even maybe I'm amazed. I've talked to real musicians. Uh, time signature changes. The beat and, and also... Yeah you know, uh, key changes uh, yeah. and all this stuff that makes all the magic. So yeah, yeah. unreal, unreal. can't so beat, cool. can't beat talent. <laughs> yeah. We had him on Sean. Or can you? Our Turns first, <laughs> our first three things we told him, I think were compliments. And he goes, well, these aren't really questions. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we were like, Oh, uh, uh, uh. We didn't know. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, we 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 got we we went into a rabbit hole. We we I was terrified. I was in yeah, I was too. Wyoming. David was in New York, yeah. and I was on vacation. Paul McCartney can talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow, I was yeah. in a shithole with my family. We didn't have Wi Fi. I was on the so road. I had to yeah. go up to the Four Seasons. It was nine thousand dollars. <laughs> <room. laughs> well yeah. worth it. What? Well yeah. worth it. Oh my. So God. then uh, we had mentioned meeting. Paul at Lauren Michaels house in 1986 when I got SNL. Yeah. And he, he scrunched up his face. I don't know what you're talking about. You're <laughs> oh my saying, God. He doesn't remember. Pull up, pull up, yeah. pull up. <laughs> so then what happened was you might find an inter- get yeah. back and come out between you guys interview. Oh, go ahead. I was I say, did you ever, did you ever listen to that? Like automated cockpit voice? It's like 300, 200, oh, yes. 100. And you're like, Oh my God, we're going to crash. I, I have my, a friend who sends me 50. airline disasters on YouTube. Yeah. So it's happy guys in a cockpit. <laughs> we'll proceed to run by four or five, seven, blah, blah, you know, and then we're going down and go, and then you hear them go, um, runway's kind of dark. And then, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Word. <It's laughs> who wants to let, I hate to fly, but I fly. I will fly. Yeah. But anyway, get back came out. So we did ask him about get back. So that, then we were good. You know about that. Did you see the documentary? Uh, yeah, yeah, the the eight hour documentary had yeah. come out. I don't know if he commented on it, but at one point I said, "Did John ever thank you for your bass lines?" And that kind of opened up a lot of stuff. John, yeah. can I ask you a question? Yeah, no, Being a podcaster, do you got do you guys any of you three ever have podcast regret? Like you have someone that's kind of like a Paul McCartney or uh, or someone you admire and you really want to, and then later you go, "Oh." I wish I'd asked him that. Yeah, for or sure. I wish I'd said that. Yeah, yeah that's sure. that's the part that, that tortures me. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I know. Me too. Um, and let me know when you get a guest on that that doesn't torture you. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty good so far because yeah, yeah. you know the game. Yeah. You know, you know. Well, we gotta podcast. keep it moving. I'm like, I gotta pick subjects because there's no questions yet. There's really only been two questions. I have no, a question. I have a question. I, here's an exact oh. question. No, but I'm. Yeah. You're, you're the only actor in human history, as far as I know, oh. piano and who piano. who played Larry of the Three Stooges. Yeah. And played Jerry Lewis. Yeah. So All what the, was the difference comedically between a zero. Three Stooge and a Jerry Lewis? Did you learn same anything? <laughs> he just same does character. it the same way. Play, no one notices. The same, Hello, I'm Larry. I'm Jerry Lewis. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, that Then, David, you're up next. You've answered my question. I could Mr. imagine Hayes. around you two. You're disturbing my coffee break. That's, That's pretty good. Break. <laughs> now do Larry. Ah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I, and then I just played Oscar Levant on on Broadway last year, so I right. only play Jewish guys, I guess. The Broadway was a big deal. <laughs> yeah. That was a big one, right? Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, so didn't you it. win? You've won Tonys, right? Or just the one for that. Yeah, damn. But um, but yeah, no, Larry Fine was was super fun that was with sofia vergara wait what did sofia Vergara play she played mo and then who played curly <laughs> she played when curly yeah, with, she with played demonopolis will sasso sofia vergara uh mm -hmm. tons of people tons of great great people um okay and 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 it was really really fun it was i was in atlanta it was so effing hot. have you ever shot in atlanta uh, in this, uh, in this, i did stand up in atlanta and walked around town that's for, inside. In, in august yeah. yeah this is outside 14 hours a day for three months and 110 degrees get wearing a wool yeah hat. that's atlanta's better than stuff. ozempic to lose yeah. weight get a get yeah. a movie in august outside in atlanta and put down your freaking pills all right go ahead <laughs> no no it was i bet it was definitely worth it it was so fun i mean it was we laughed so hard but it was it was a lot of work yeah and, but i had to shave my head twice a day every day because by lunchtime mm -hmm. it would start growing back i would just have five o'clock shadow on my bald head oh so, really and then, and then they, yeah because they glued the wig to my head mm. and so the glue while you're sweating and uh. ugh, that's yeah. when I when I first met you, I had glue on my head and I was sweating. That's right. Do you remember That's, that? Yeah. So I'm yeah. at Lights Out, David's show. All right. Yeah, and yeah. I, I had just done Al Pacino as Scarface. Yeah. And then you get the wig off and the bald cap and the thing. And you're just yeah. it's always fascinating. What's he got going on up there? Yeah. What, where where does his hairline actually start? <laughs> but you were incredibly pleasant and I, I liked know, you immediately. I, I love like same, same. It was so fun to meet you. David, uh, I've known for years. David. Yeah. David was was doing just shoot me when I was doing only grace at the stage right next to us, yeah. and I was walk. We were both walking together, and I just I left him to walk up to my stage, and I just opened the stage door, and David said, "God, you smell. It smells so bad on the lot." And I opened my stage door, and I go, <laughs> "All I smell is a hit." Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking the, this real story. <laughs> I used to is, say to people, I, <laughs> go ahead. You guys, well, I, I said to David, fee five fo fum, I smell an Oscar nomination. That's what <laughs> from the movie he did. Uh, well, when <laughs> I did, with fee five I did just okay. shoot me. I'm in. It was going along fine. Then these assholes came along from Will and Grace. And yeah. they were, we like, I think Megan was right next to my dressing room. We'd have to walk, you know, 100 yards to the stages. Well, yours is closer, but yeah. walk over. So we see each other all the time. And then we were doing pretty good. We were by no means like a monster hit. It was very tough. For a, that was a great show and you did great. I have great. to say great. when we're up, when we're on the same lot as Seinfeld, you know, there, there, there was a real heyday right then. There was a lot of shows, yeah. Frasier and ER and yeah. Will and Grace. And, yeah, so Frasier. I think what happened, the humiliating, there was two humiliating things. One, <laughs> we were, I think the eight o'clock and then Friends is maybe the night or whatever show. And then the hammock ones, the degrading name for the 8.30 and 9.30 shows, were the ones that needed some help. So you go, Will, Will and Grace will follow us because they're new. They don't know uh -huh. anything right, yet. Right, I think right. that's what happened. You can tell me if I'm wrong. I and, think so. I and know. then something follows like Frasier at 9.30 or whatever. And then after about a year, they went <laughs> and switched us because Will and Grace came out of the gate pretty hard. Hot. We were on for years, so they switched us. So we flip flop where we were eight thirty, I think. So Will and Grace is off and running, 
And then the other part that was infuriating was when I had to walk by all four of your Porsches on the way to the set because you fuckers got yeah. Porsches. We were, we were gifted Porsches. We were sharing car. a moped at that well, point. Wait a minute. Well, how many episodes before you got the car? So the same thing happened to us <laughs> as, as happened to Friends, which was Friends wasn't a hit. Out of, I mean, people watched it, but over mm-hmm. the, the after the first season of Friends, over the summer when they used to run, play reruns, Friends became huge. Oh. And then we started out the same way where nobody really kind of, they were just checking us out. And then over the summer, it just exploded. And uh, so the network, the head of network, Scott Sassa, I was called him, I got him mixed up with Sammy Sosa. I know Scott, Sassa. <laughs> yeah, Sassa. And um, Scott Sassa, he brought us to lunch. And then we were, when we were done eating lunch, we walked out and there was four Porsches there. He's like, congratulations on the blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God. And immediately I thought of selling it because I needed the money. So I waited like, you know, because why do I want to play insurance on it? I don't know. Yeah. I need to pay my rent. So I, w- I sold it like two months later. But you got a decent chunk. You get decent at the beginning. I know you guys probably renegotiated, but at the beginning, you did pretty good, right? Yeah, not. I mean, sure. Not not in the beginning. No, but right. probably was, by when did it really like? Okay, this is a hit. Was it year three season or two. one? Season two? two. Yeah, for sure. So the summer jacked it up, and then you came back hard, and then yeah. maybe they flipped us after that. But just shoot me was doing fine. It was all. It was really like a great fun Such a good time. Show. It was yeah. all of that was fun. I remember, I was wondering if we ever were up for the same award, because I only got, I got, I didn't get that many, I didn't win anything, but Put it on your trivia list, trivia questions. What How is, many awards? Yeah. Oh, Did mine you, zero, but yeah. uh, I'll just, that's a spoiler. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I thought maybe Golden Globe, because we were both See? supporting actors on comedies, <laughs> and right. I was looking at all your, you got awards and stuff. Well, I would have loved to have lost to you. I think you're brilliant. It says Jack McFarlane. <laughs> Jack had a last name. I didn't even know that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, that should be a trivia question. Yeah. Well, and Finch did. Didn't Finch? I don't know if he did. Mm-hmm. Aren't you impressed that I No, I was Dennis Finch. Finch. Finch was my last name. Oh, Dennis Finch. Yeah. But they called me Finch. And I mean, no one would know Dennis because, oh, uh, George Siegel called me Dennis in the show. Oh, George They always say that no. you were the fawns of Just Shoot Me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we and, were and Sean, were you the Fonz of <laughs> Will and Grace? I was the Fonz. Hey, you were the funny, <laughs> overtly <laughs> funny. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Remember, remember, hey, hey, hey! Remember what's happening? Fuck yeah! That, that mm-hmm. was the only show I ever wrote into TV Guide because I wanted because I thought <laughs> D was so funny. Remember D Rogers. Um, sister. Did, oh, is she younger? And she yeah, said a little smart younger. alecky she comment. Was so funny. <laughs> I thought she was hysterical. So I wrote it a TV guide as a kid and I was like, More D. Um, I, where is D? You know, what does she do? By the way, she's a veterinarian now in the valley. Oh. Was, yeah. Per- perfect. Cat's out of the bag. Here's me on. Cat high talent. <laughs> I've got a good way to get Dana to do an impression. Ready? Okay, good. Uh, Line me up. Get ready. I did Sean's other show later, Hot in Cleveland. Yes, you did. Brilliant. And with Wendy Malik, who's so good. It's not even worth talking about. She's so good. Everyone knows it. And mm-hmm. I was Was that playing... a Hazy Mills production or no? Yeah, it was. Yes, yeah. And Hot in Cleveland Mills pro- was great. Yep. And we, uh, and I played a hair cutter. And who was my nemesis? Was it Regis Philbin? I, I don't remember. You asshole. Oh, yeah. Yes, was it that? was. I knew it. Okay. Well, I was then why did you setting because I was waiting for Dana to go. Anyway, you ready for this? Anyway, anyway you ready for this? Who doesn't love Sean Hayes? Here he is. You know, <laughs> he's been active all these years. He's got so many shows. He's got timing like a watch. You can't believe it. He makes an entrance <laughs> like nobody's business. Now he's got a podcast empire. It's called Smart Who or Smart Less, whatever it is. But the king and Whatever a Broadway or wherever else he goes, Chad is. <laughs> it's all day. I could listen to that all day, for all day. hours straight. I've turned William Shatner Chinese because I think I signed him off as as Regis. Who doesn't love Captain Kirk? He's done all these things. He's getting to the moon. He goes everywhere. He's always in outer space. If he's not in outer space, he's at chill. He's having a bowl of chill. <laughs> whatever. Just on and on and on. <laughs> the so Emmys crazy. and the... Uh, oh, I love Reed. I love. I get to visit people. Or I've already gone to the stars. When I do yeah, Regis, yeah. I, you know, 
And you know, you know Mike Schur then, right? Of SNL or yeah. Well, and he created Parks and Rec, and mm-hmm. yeah. um, Mike Schur, he's great. He's married to Regis's daughter. Oh, could you believe that, Mike Schur? Right? The old, the only daughter you could ever have. There he is. I hope he's a good man. You know what? <laughs> the way so I good. learned, I learned Trump was by doing. It was a bit of Regis, and then adding in Marlon Brando kind of made me go to Trump. Now the people, everybody does Trump, but it's like, well, go, go, and then blah, go, go, and then you get, you get that guy, you know, uh, you know, you know, inside Frank, baseball. No, no, it's good. I love that. You know how to like, I'm fat. like you, Frank Caliendo, right. It's amazing impression. Well, his, his Morgan Friedman is one of those that's gone to this other, almost scary level, yeah. <laughs> his, yeah. you know, like, but, it's not, is this a magic trick? But I, it blows my mind, the science behind your brain, Dana, and the ability to do that. Like how the ability to listen and then know where to place it in your throat to, to, to mimic something it's, like that. It's, it's terrible it's, when you, when I don't, it is terrible when you, you just say, Oh, I, I want to try to learn this person or someone's asking you to learn this person and you can't do it at all. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. very painful. Yeah, all yeah. I do, all I do is listen a lot, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, and just pray <laughs> because it, a lot of it's like singing too. If you sing, you know where to place a note and stuff. I suppose it's similar, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And for me, I just get bored, or I'm not, I don't feel like I'm at the level of Frank Caliendo as a pure impressionist. So then I just try to abstract it and make a character out of it. But it's enough of the true source that it makes sense. Anyway. Yeah, no, it's so great anyway. Whatever. I can, can only do my about- friends. When you do your friends, you know, it's funny, but yeah. you can't use that anywhere except with your stupid friend group. And so, then if your friend became famous, yeah. it would be your impression. Praise God, but it'll never happen. Uh, uh, we have a question for you. <laughs> We've been Already? <laughs> yeah. Already <laughs> 48 minutes in. Look okay. At these notes. Ready? <laughs> How, what's, because you have three people note. Uh, on movie. Smartless, you have three people interviewing. That's not the question. Okay. But what's the least amount you've talked and who is the guest? Oh gosh. The least amount. Well, it's usually a sports figure. Oh, and, you hang uh, back. Yeah. Um, but I'm more, cause I'm more interested in their life and their, you know, everyday life rather than the sport itself. But even though I, I, I like sports, I love football and Will's getting me into soccer. So it's, I find that yeah, you get into soccer with me. Yeah. And then, um, but uh, no, it was Clayton Crenshaw. What's his name? The baseball player. For the, the, the Dodgers. Kurt Cameron. Yeah. No. <laughs> Clayton <Kurt Cameron>. Kershaw. <laughs> He's like, who's that guy? Kurt. Cameron, I think it was uh Peyton Kershaw. He's super, super great guy. So he mm-hmm. was on, and I didn't, you know, and he was an early guest. So I was like, <laughs> I didn't know what to ask because it was baseball. And I, I I know how to I played baseball as a kid, blah, blah, blah. Like I I know the ins and outs, but I didn't really have anything off the top of my head I could ask him. So I Googled while we were talking mm-hmm. and I said, So um I read somewhere that you were left-handed. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> that was my one question. Good Did, job. You're like, I heard you bought a Jeep once. Walk walk us through I'll that. Okay. Why not lease? If you had to stand somewhere, would you rather stand on the mound or home plate oh, <laughs> while you were exactly. having lunch? That's exactly. I turned into Chris Farley. Oh, you did? You were like, uh, 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 remember remember when you were left-handed? Yeah. That was great. Stupid, dumb. Why did I? By the way, speaking of Paul McCartney, that was one of the great Chris Farley um, questions of all time. Was the Chris Farley show on Saturday Night Live? Yeah, Chris Farley show. Hey, remember when you were in the Beatles? <laughs> yeah, that was cool. You know, the best laugh was, remember when you said, <laughs> that was, that well, the love it. you take is equal to the love you make? And Paul goes, yeah. And he goes, is that true? <laughs> that's the biggest laugh and paul goes well i mean i like the thing so he goes yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was awesome funny. that was awesome uh, that was awesome. Uh, yeah. wait tell me now now let me tell tell me your since you asked me what's yours what's the one you talk the least david besides this one well <laughs> the guest has never talked the most so I we mean, dane and i talk the whole time yeah that's kind of like us i mean but with three people how do you do that it's hard enough with two or three with three hosts um yeah. you know, there's a rhythm we've been friends for over 20 years 25 Who drives years. it mm-hmm. 
It's all, I don't know. It's always different. It depends whose guest it is, you know? So like, like you feel the responsibility of driving it if it's your guest, which is a fun response okay. because you get, you did the research and you look at all, you know, all the stuff. And so, um, I, I enjoy, I enjoy it. I also enjoy getting the shit beat out of me. Like I love it. It's yeah. so, is, I that, get, yeah. is that one of the hooks that people like is that you guys all give each other shit? I get, I'm, I guess so. Uh, I mean, why do they like it? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Well, by the way, we let's wonder, go to the phones. We wonder the same thing. It's, <laughs> be, it's right, because what? they know you're really good friends. I guess and, so. And, and that's okay. what it's that's what it says. But I, sometimes Jason Bateman will come up with such interesting questions. Uh, I almost I almost don't really need the, I don't need anything else to be said because his <laughs> questions are really sophisticated. Yeah, yeah. And then um, you're like more. You come from the just the. Uh, I'm a fan. You're I'm a fan, like, wow, and you're, yeah. you're you're spontaneous. You're like the and, wallpaper. And, yeah, and they, you're a good laugher. <laughs> you're you're a, <laughs> so. I am. I we am don't like the wallpaper. Uh, but, we don't uh, know what they're paying you, Sean, <laughs> but we'd like to try to see if we could sort of tease you over yeah. to fly on the wall. Yeah. we'll match it. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I enjoy. It turns out this is the dumbest thing I've ever said in my life. I enjoy comedy. Yeah, I mean, I really but it is true. I, I mean, I like funny, fast people. You know, like mm -hmm. people who are fast. Will is fun. Um, I saw Will's, Jason Will's the funny. other night, and I saw you across the room. But you were literally like ten feet away, and there's no way to get to you. Well, no, no. Could wasn't it? Number? Could you take a well, I saw Jason. He's got he's skinnier, and he's got a beard now. Yeah, he, looks, he looks cool as shit. Yeah, he's the best. He because he's doing a show that he's about to film. Yeah. Yeah, he looked cool. Uh, I think you were over there with maybe Justin Thoreau. Is that possible? Oh, yeah. At the Vanity Fair party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't see you there. Yeah, you saw me and looked through me, but that's fine. So what happened was... That's um, what wallpaper does. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were, I'm like, who is that? Is that new wallpaper? And then <laughs> and I go... And I walked through you and you were a ghost, which was bizarre. Were you with Ar Arnett? <laughs> yeah, we, we all went together. Me, Jason, and Will went together. Oh, gross. You guys all travel together? Too? Yeah, you hang out together. I mean, Ugh. it'll blow the, your mind the, when the, the press trio tour isn't ending. Is three of a kind. Let me ask you a question about because <laughs> it's pretty uh, like Jason, you know, does Ozarks. And yeah. Well, it's, it's one, that's singular Ozark, and he's done with it. But Ozark. Oh, really? And he did the Ozarks, which is going to be the Ozarks. prequel. Sorry, we talk. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I, ha, ha, there was a cat. It was in a bag. Right. Now it's out of the bag. <laughs> News flash. But right. he meant, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like, so you guys all have production companies, which just one observation. Yeah. So I, you all started to take show business by the reins. <laughs> well, mm. you can start one too. Um, people advise us not to. They just, okay. they don't think. It they said, we show. feel like the fun ends here. Yeah. <laughs> and the You're, creativity ends. Just kind of like the tram ride at Universal. Yeah, they go. Everybody <laughs> yeah. off. Dana and Spade off. We always say it's like it's it's as surprising to us as it is to you that like people even listen because we're just losers doing like exactly what we're doing right now with you guys. It's like we just can't believe people find it interesting enough to to hang in there, and and we're so grateful for that too. I mean, and it is kind of fun. It is fun. Oh to my do. god! It's and and as to your question, Dan, about like schedules and stuff and lining the three of us up, mm -hmm. we've been hanging out already for decades, so it's like it's easy. And and we used it as an excuse to see each other to start the podcast. We're like, why don't we just start one just because of just because because it's mm -hmm. an excuse to see each other while we're in lockdown. And uh, we mm -hmm. did like two episodes, then we did six, then we did 10, then we did 20, and then here we are, you know? Um, yeah. But, and it was fun. The, it, it continues to be the time of our lives. I mean. You're smart because you know how to do that. I wouldn't even, I mean, I did a lot of Zooms with friends, like the exact same thing, yeah. but it never crossed anyone's mind. Like, how would we beam this out? Or, I mean, that's just somebody has to know something. Yeah. I mean, how did you start this one? I mean, you, right? Same like, hey, let's do it. But this. we knew how, we knew what, that they were out there like you were doing it which was smart when there weren't that many and so you were just like hey how does that work someone figures yeah. it out and there's it's not kind of like the clogged. internet right it's like yeah hey how does this work this is kind of fun you know mm -hmm. that's all yeah yeah and it, it works and there's a lot that don't work so uh, it's great that you got one that works well thank you the, yeah. the only thing i can think is that it's sort of 
art form with a small a, where the consumer of the art form with a small a is doing something else while they're consuming what we're doing. Uh, Predominantly, a lot of people are driving or yeah. gardening or right. at the gym. But, but, so, and, but don't they but yeah. don't people watch shows like that now and not on their sure. tablet? Totally. Like, everybody's doing yeah. something multitasking two at, things. Yeah. 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 Isn't that it's interesting? That, that's that that's why I saw watch. Dune in a movie theater, a stadium theater, and it, it was incredible. And it's yeah, just all this big things. sound. And I had to turn my phone off. It's only there and in church. The phone goes off. And that was revolutionary because you could be watching a really cool movie. Yeah. And then someone bring, bring. And then it's like, if you what? watch what? at home. <laughs> I at found home. if I watch a movie at home, I will look at my phone and it's horrible. Yeah. Same. Same. Because you're not at the movie theater where it's not like this is your one thing. Yeah. So at home, you're kind of like, well, I can always, let me get something to eat. What did you think of Dune? And what did you think of Dune 2? How you doing? Well, Dune. How you doing? <laughs> Would, I'll do it as Garth. Would Dune, because that's a good word for Garth. I saw Dune. <laughs> they would make it sexual or something. Right. The, the first Dune was a little convoluted for me. Yeah, I went to Dune two. Yeah, yeah. And it was uh, in the genre of science fiction fantasy. Um, it's one yeah. of the best movies ever made. I, I 100% agree. By the way, same director as Arrival. Oh, really? So yeah. it it just works on so many levels and it's, it's fantastical. Yeah, it's, the effects, the sound. I, I, I don't know. I was, I, I like I've it. already, I've already seen it twice. It's already theater. good. Then Josh Brolin comes in like halfway through and he's great. Yeah. He's such a stud. And then he uh, is the best. Zendaya's great. The, the kid was great. I mean, that for such kid. a big movie, the that's... kid. Hey, Timothy Chalamet. What's up? Uh, he is. He's kind of, he's younger more, than me. For sure. Hey man. Listen, is he older man. Than me? The director's like, the director's like, hey, can you bring the kid around? Great. <laughs> can I mean, he knock on his trailer. Did they put an effect on T- Timothy's voice Kylie when he would up. he would get mad? Shasta, woman, do he's speaking whatever language. You know, how about it's when like, they would, right, how about when they would like him and his mom would yeah have that kind of power where they can uh, Jedi master somebody's mind, you know, mm-hmm. and they yeah. like um. Open the door. And you'd be like, what? And she'd be like, <laughs> don't touch his arm. Rip it off. Kill him. And you're like, wait, <laughs> what's happening? It was crazy. Yeah, I know. It's just well done. David, that'd be a great movie for you to watch. In a theater. Go to I the saw Grove. it. I saw it. Oh, you That's did? What you I'm did saying. Too. Oh, you can okay. chime in. I like, they're so scared of the sand snakes. Then at the end, it's like HR Puff and stuff. And they're like, hey, we're all flying around on sand snakes. <laughs> well, I love they're, they're, they're two miles <laughs> long and you've got two two ice picks. And yeah. You, you, and then you stand on this thing that's two miles long and command it. That's right. a really low IQ. I didn't know they were golden centipede. retrievers. <laughs> the, the, the brain capacity of this thing. It's as big it's as an so aircraft nuts. character. But, <laughs> it, but it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Then it kind but of you want to ride one. Then it kind yes. of hop on. Yeah, they I'm getting like, one. Right. Universal Studios yeah. has already got them made. They just haven't got all the electronics figured right. out. But you'll get on it. And I'm were you around for squat. the first Dune, Sean? We're gonna let you go. But were you no. around for the first Dune, which was Sting was? In I it? never saw it. Scotty saw it, and he he was you know he likes it for nostalgic reasons. But he said these are far. Dana, you must have seen it. I saw it. Sting wore a, basically a diaper in Dune in 1982. I remember that image, though, yeah. It, just a white diaper. Yes, you and do. Then was, yes, uh, I do. Gay jokes. Incredibly uh, tan. <laughs> that's the only one so far. <laughs> gay, well, ju- gay we'll jokes. Are you offended by gay jokes? No, we'll take I it all encourage this time. them. I encourage them. I may, I had one. I had two that I stopped doing. Should I turn I think, them behind? I, think I stopped doing make, them because I just thought. No, you know. I think if you make them like to me, we're all friends, and mm. well, and Jason are two of my closest friends. It means you're just close. Like yeah. I can make fun of your hair, your car, mm, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Off limits. Well, it also I little bit, and we yeah, when <laughs> someone is comfortable with certain types of jokes, whether they be racial or whatever, and Usually it means they're they're the opposite of of someone who's racist. I mean, they're just like because right. it's so ridiculous. They don't right. or or gay jokes text. are so ridiculous is a stereotype yeah. that right. that if they're easy with it because it's ridiculous. Yeah, well, hope this is coming off right. Or we could the yeah, screen could the screen could go to blue. You know, no, because yeah. you're talking to a gay person. I just think it's it, all it depends on is the messenger who's telling the joke and and how is it intended. That's right. All. 
Also, I, who's not turned on by staying in a diaper? I am. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's that's the funny thing is that's what I think you'd like. I go, oh, he'd like that. Right. You know, but but I, like yeah, I don't know if this is Hollywood folklore, but he made a doo-doo in the diaper and they said, we got to change it. And he goes, a doo-doo? That, that's I, not I my, that, doo-doo. that is not my diaper. I'm my, my doo-doo. I'm going full circle back <laughs> yeah, to. I got it. I got that's right. not my diaper. Somebody, somebody comes in here. Somebody comes in here, poops in my diaper. And then leaves. <laughs> I don't know who yes. it is, but that's what they've been doing for years. Yes. I'll Lock be watching you. you every huh? breath you take. Hey, you could do a song with that. Thank you. I'll try. Lonely nights, never be another. Wow. wow. Get that that's guy on Broadway. Anyway, he could sing. He can dance. He could do comedy. <laughs> what can he do? He could do a somersault. He could play it. How about this? A question for you. You've done it all. Yeah. Is there a movie th- fantasy for you? A role? Would you like to put prosthetics on and be like yeah. Gary Oldman? Yes. Oh, yeah. S- I like. Something. I mean, it's kind of like sketch comedy. It's kind of like yeah. uh, character actors like Philip Seymour Hoffman, Meryl Streep, those kind of people who can kind of transform into people. I mm-hmm. love that stuff. I love tr- trying. I may fail miserably, but I like trying at least. I think it's fun, right? You get well, to- you're doing good. Thanks, you guys. I love you both very, very Thank you, very Sean. Much. Sean Hayes has been our guest. And let me tell you, nobody's funnier than this guy. He's the top of the box, spotless everywhere you find your podcast, but they don't need my help. They're up to chops. <laughs> Nobody beats Joe Rogan, but they give him a run for his money. <laughs> Call your daddy. Anyway. I wish I could. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, you All guys. Right, Good Sean, to see you, buddy. Both Hope very to see much. You. Oh, Bye, I buddy. love you. That was great. Love you. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Please follow, subscribe, leave a like, a review, all the stuff. Smash that button, whatever it is, wherever you get your podcasts. Fly on the Wall is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Jenna Weiss Berman of Odyssey, Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment, and Heather Santoro. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman. <laughs>